By definition, the Dark Side of the Ring series by Vice bring out some of the wildest stories from the wrestling world. Most of them are not flattering to the world that fans have come to love and tell stories about some of the most controversial figures or the biggest scandals. With that being the case, let's take a look at some of the wildest things said on the series. Before we get into the rest of the video, don't forget to press that like button and make sure you subscribe to Wrestling Rambles with notifications on. Hosting a wrestling show in North Korea is already wild by itself. On top of that, put in some of the most controversial wrestlers ever in history and you're guaranteed a show that no one signed up for. Putting aside the fact that WCW and NJPW held what's the largest ever wrestling show for two nights at North Korea in the immense collision in Korea event back in the 1990s and you can see that things were bound to go bad. Wrestlers were already feeling their nerves performing in a country so notoriously shut off from the rest of the world. The military and other personnel were not making things easy on them. On top of that, there was tension within them as well. Talking about their harsh treatment, there was actually tension between two Cold Scorpio and Road Warrior Hawk at this time. Scorpio didn't like Ric Flair as he felt that he was the reason that he had been fired from WCW years back. Hawk had been riding with Flair on the trip, but chose to sit with Scorpio when he saw Flair come out. He thought Flair was looking for him and wanted to go to him, but Scorpio said that he felt Flair should ride alone. This led to a fight between the two with Hawk calling him the N-word. F that pussy. Let him ride by himself, Hawk said. What did you say? I said, you didn't hear me? I said, F that pussy. Let him ride by himself. What part didn't you hear? Was it F him, let him ride by himself, or was it the pussy part? He got mad about it, came back there, and called me the N-word. He swung, he missed. I hit that MF for about five or six times, and I was wearing his ass out. He's bleeding from his face and all this. The Japanese boys grab me, and I fall down into the seat. They're holding me down, and he's trying to punch me. I'm ducking and dodging, and he can't hit me. I jumped on him, stuck my finger in his eye, and I was on my way out with his eye. I had his eye halfway out of the socket. The Japanese boys jumped on me. Me and we kind of got up. On top of that, things were not over yet. Scorpio wanted to kill Hawk and took two steel chopsticks. Chris Benoit saw him sharpening them and heard that Scorpio was going to stab Hawk. Benoit managed to talk him out of it, stopping a disaster. I'm making a shiv. I'm going to stab that mf -er. Chris is like, don't do that. You don't want to do that. If you kill Hawk over here, you'll be here for the rest of your life. They put it behind them, but there was nearly a murder in North Korea. There has rarely been a story told that's as wild as the plane ride from hell. Everything that could go wrong did. The fight was delayed hours and all the wrestlers were drunk. When they finally took off, Brock Lesnar and Mr. Perfect got into a fight, hitting the door so that it almost opened right there in midair. Michael Hayes was drugged on that fight too, which led to him fighting with Bradshaw. Goldust was professing his love for his ex right there in the confines of the fight in the least wild moment of that episode. However, the worst by far was what Ric Flair did. He sexually harassed a flight attendant. He approached her naked under his robe with the front open and had then gotten her to touch his nether regions. Multiple wrestlers corroborated this as well. For those that are not aware, New Jack was insane. While the star is a legend to some for the work that he did in the hardcore wrestling world, he did take things too far several times. The first that comes up is Vic Grimes. Grimes and he had an accident where the two of them were teetering on top of a scaffold. Both stars were supposed to fall together and land on the tables placed below. Grimes got scared as they were so far up and Jack tried to pull him, but just ended up falling further and missing the table. He had to take a bump on the table but landed on the concrete on his head. Grimes also landed on his head. I slammed my head on the floor and cracked my skull. I had brain fluid coming out of my nose and ears, and I had nerve damage in my right eye. I will never be able to see out of my right eye again in my life. He decided to get revenge on Grimes. Outside ECW, the two wrestled again, and they ended up in a scaffold match. Jack stunned Grimes with an actual stun gun when they were on top of the scaffold. Grimes could not feel his legs, but Jack picked him up and said he would not need them and tossed him off the scaffold that was 40 feet high. He 
missed all the tables, which was what Jack wanted. He then hit the top rope with his back and then bounced back into the ring. Thanks to the rope hitting his back, he didn't suffer the injuries that Jack had intended and he survived, but it was a near thing. The second is the horrifying mass transit incident. On that occasion, a 17-year-old wrestler faked being of age so that he could wrestle. Unfortunately for him, he was going to wrestle New Jack. The wrestler was named Mass Transit and he didn't show Jack the respect that he felt he deserved and asked to put Jack through the table. He was isolated by Jack's team and beat down. Jack would then attack him with a scalpel. He was hit with everything and the only 17-year-old boy was cut up so much that he was bleeding all over the place. Even while the poor kid was being attended to, Jack roared into the mic that he had hoped the wrestler died. I hope this fat piece of sh bleeds to death because I don't give a F. Bruiser Brody was without a doubt one of the top stars of his time, but his life came to an end in a tragedy. He was owed money by a Puerto Rican wrestler, Jose Gonzalez. He confronted him while backstage at a show and Gonzalez stabbed him with a knife. The stabbing itself was not seen, but everyone at the scene heard what had happened. Tony Atlas was there, as was Dutch Mantel. They wanted to testify against Gonzalez, but when the police came, they didn't take it seriously, thinking it was a storyline. By the time the trial was held, Atlas and Mantel were outside the country and no one called them or told them it was being held. As a result, Gonzalez was able to get away with the murder and discharged. It was only after the trial that they got their summons. On screen, Jimmy Snooker was usually a babyface. He knew what he was doing in the ring and could work the crowd like very few others. Behind the scenes, though, he was a very different person. As it turns out, Buddy Rogers was even appointed in a guardian sort of role over Snooker to ensure that he didn't do wrong. He had a lot of issues with addiction. Rogers had to stop it soon enough as it was too taxing on him, and that's where Nancy Argentino stepped in. Nancy Argentino was supposed to work as a babysitter for him. Unfortunately, it turned tragic very quickly. The two were dating as well and it turned out that she would pass away on May 10th, 1983. The hospital received a call from Snooker for an ambulance. She was struggling to breathe and was oozing yellow fluid from her nose and her mouth as well. Apparently, she was injured too severely and died as a consequence at only 23 years of age. The autopsy said that Argentino had suffered brain injuries and had gotten them 12 to 24 hours before the ambulance was called. She also had a lot of cuts and bruises there being the suggestion that it was murder. However, that remained open. Vince McMahon came in to talk Snuka out of it while he himself didn't have much to say beyond saying that she slipped near a guardrail and fell. Vince McMahon went to the district attorney with a briefcase. What was in it is anyone's guess. After that, there were no charges. Argentina's family got a lawyer to look into it and eventually got a grand jury case. It was not convincing to the DA and he stopped it. In the 2015 trial, the case was reopened. The DA charged Snooker decades after the original crime. He was then considered unfit to stand trial due to dementia. The homicide charges were dropped and he passed away in 2017 due to illness. Marty Jannetty has never been a steady presence in the wrestling world. In the 2000s, he had seemingly lost some of his sanity with what he said not really matching with reality. However, the craziest thing he talked about was the fact that he had apparently killed someone. He left it ambiguous because it could be a wrestling storyline as well. The strangest story they talked about from there was that when he was 13 years old, an older man apparently tried to sexually assault him. He had written on Facebook that he made the man disappear. The police looked into it and determined that there were no missing persons reported filed during that time. He says that the post was a part of a wrestling storyline. He then said that if it was real, then the guy had jumped on top of him and hit him with a rock in self-defense. He spoke about it like it had happened, but then said it was all hypothetical. He said that he called his brother and the two of them got rid of the body in the river. Al Snow said that this was not the first time Jannetty had told the story, in which case that cast doubt on the fact that it was just a storyline. He said that Jannetty told him a version of the story as far back as the 90s. Since then, Jannetty has said that the sexual assault was real, but the fact that he killed him was not. No one seems to know the truth of what happened, not even Janetti. Every wrestling fan is familiar with what happened with Chris Benoit. That he killed his wife and his son before killing himself is not a secret. However, the details of the story were made this large for the first time in the dark side of the ring. The world also got introduced to Benoit's other son, David. He wanted to be a wrestler but found himself shut out from the business as WWE deleted all traces of his father. No one from the company ever contacted him except 
Benoit's own friends like Chris Jericho and Chavo Guerrero Jr. Back then, none of them contacted him as wild as he was clearly the one most affected, having had his entire family ripped from him in one night. And these were the wildest things said on Dark Side of the Ring. I hope you're all having a great day. Thank you so much for watching, and I will see y'all later.